Hello and welcome to You So You. My name's Zoe and this is my channel all about the crafty bits and pieces I get up to. I knit, I sew, I spin on a drop spindle, I dabble in weaving from time to time and anything else that takes my crafty fancy. But today we are looking at the tubular cast off. So grab a brew, put your feet up and let's get started. any returning viewers and to any new viewers a very warm welcome to you. As I mentioned in the opening to this video we're looking at tubular cast off today which is a nice neat cast off. It's great for stretchy edges, makes the stitches sort of roll round um, and seem to sort of continue on to the other side um, on the edge of your, your garment. It's good for cuffs, it's good for neckbands, it's good for toe up socks, top down hats, that kind of thing. So it's a nice stretchy neat um, edge to put on your, your projects. So uh, without further ado, let's switch this camera around and uh, take a look at it. Okay, so we're going to be doing a tubular cast off. Now, a lot of the instructions for tubular cast off will have you do uh, one pass where you knit one, slip one, one pass where you purl one, slip one, and then separate the knits and the purls onto separate needles before doing the, the finishing up. This method doesn't do that. This method does it all in one pass. So I've already worked my ribbing. And I've cut myself like the yarn from the, the working yarns. It's about, well, it's three and a bit times the, the length of the cast off edge. And I've already threaded it onto my preferred darning needle, which is this bendy one. So the end result that we're going for is this neat edge where the, the cast off just curls over the edge and disappears onto the back. So there's a much neater finish than the, the cast off that I certainly learnt first, where you work your way around in order and, and uh, pass the previous stitch over the, the next one. So, so yes, it's a nice neat finish, it's good for, for cuffs, good for neckbands, good for socks, uh, that kind of thing, and top down hats would work well for it as well. So, I'm just going to wrangle my needles and get my yarn out past my stitch markers. So if I pop this needle into the stitches, so it's going to hold them ready. And we need to do a little bit of prep work. So we're going to pass the yarn through the first needle, leaving it on through the first stitch, leaving it on the needle. We're going to pass it through purlwise. That's a knit stitch that we're going through. And then we're going to take the needle around the back and hook it over the first purl stitch to the second stitch on the needle and pass the yarn through knitwise. So that's your preparation stage. Through purlwise, leave on, knitwise, leave on. Now we're going to go knitwise through this first stitch and take it off the needle and pull the yarn through. And we're going to take our needle in front of the work and pass it through the next knit stitch Purlwise. Obviously that's staying on because we've got a stitch in the way, it's not going to be able to come off the needle yet. And the next stitch is a purl stitch, so we're going to take that off the needle purlwise. And again we're going to go behind the work, grab that next purl stitch and pass the yarn through it knitwise. And uh, just to extract my little bit of hair from the cuff. Anyone else knit their hair into stuff? Okay, so knit wise off, pearl wise on. Pearl wise off, knit wise on. So you're always working into two knit stitches then two purl stitches. You're always doing knit stitches knitwise to take them off the needle, purl stitches purlwise to take them off the needle.
remember to take that needle behind the work to pass through the purl stitch knitwise. So you do develop quite a rhythm to it. I do find it takes me a little bit longer than some of the other bind offs, but it's, it's worth it in the end. So don't untangle myself from this needle. Okay, so here's my cast off edge, curling around nicely. Now I've got two stitches left. So I've got one knit and one purl. So I'm just going to knit that one off. Purl that one off. And then I can finish up the end of my yarn the same way as I normally would. So I'll weave my end into this stitch and then hide the end away. So it's a nice neat finish. Those of you familiar with Kitchener Stitch will have recognised some of the process because essentially what you're doing is Kitchener Stitch along the edge of your garment. Okay, so here's my nice neat finished cuff. I just need to, to weave in the ends. So there we can see the uh, stitches just rolling around the edge of the, the work. That's the inside and that's the outside. It's a nice neat stretchy finish. So it's a, a good one to use for, for cuffs and socks and, and that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, if you're familiar with Kitchener Stitch, it won't be a problem at all for you. So, uh, so yeah, so that's that. Now I aim to put a video out every weekend and if you've enjoyed spending time in my company, I'd love to see you in the next one. So do all the stuff down there. Uh, but until then, happy crafting and bye-bye for now. Mm -hmm.